Uh, Ross Dellinger is with us here on this Monday morning. And Deli, it's been a lot of reaction. It's been a weird show, man. It's been real weird um, just because of obviously the emotions of losing a friend and a colleague uh, and somebody that was so powerful in all of our worlds. Um, and, and then, of course, LSU going out there and setting records, going to the national championship um, for, for only the fourth time in program history, uh, fifth time in program history. Um, good morning, man. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Um, it was a, a weird, uh, weird weekend, weird day, Saturday, you know, odd, one of the most, I don't know, peculiar post season, uh, or post game, uh, scenes that I've ever been a part of, you know, where it was, uh, usually you see tears of happiness and there were that, but, uh, there were tears of sadness too. It, it was uh, an unusual scene, and and uh, you know I can't tell you how uh, appreciative I am for uh, Stephen Junior. You know, for uh, it shows how strong he is. Um, his words were um, incredibly powerful, and um, have uh, that story has. Uh, Produced uh, an outpouring that uh, I've never seen, and I think it's just uh, it tells you how powerful his words were. You know, it had nothing to do with my words. Um, I think it had everything to do with his. Yeah. Um, Saturday, Steve Ensminger Sr., what do you make of what, what he did? Gosh, it was incredible. Um, you know, walked up to his wife, uh, afterward and asked her, you know, how he did it. She, she asked a lot of people that, and, and no one really had, no one knew, you know, it, everybody was giving me one of two, two answers, God, or, or I don't know, basically, you know, and, and they'd say only, you know, only Slinger could do it. Only, only Steve could do it. Uh, you know, he, he's, as I wrote about in that story, you know, he, he's, um, uh, and as you guys very, very well know, um, his reputation around LSU is one of toughness, you know, mm -hmm. uh, hard work. And uh, it just, it, it, it didn't surprise me at all. I don't think it surprised anybody there that, that he was able to do what he did, you know. Um, and, you know, to find out from Stephen Jr. that he, he called, that Steve called his son, who was not just uh, grieving, but, but, in a medical situation in the hospital, he was grieving so much um, that Steve called him before he went out for warm-ups uh, and then called the football game is is just uh, something that a lot of people, uh, could, you know, couldn't do. Um, but but Steve did it. And I think Steve Jr. wanted him to do it, you know, wanted his dad to do it. Um, it was uh, it, it was incredible. I'm sure it was the day that uh, – that uh, you know, Steve and Stephen and all and all the Ensminger family and the LSU family uh, and the LSU fan base will will probably never forget. Um, <clears throat> as far as uh, the game itself, Ross, uh, have you ever seen anything like an offensive first half? Is what the Tigers did Saturday. I mean, against A and M, I guess was the only closest, but that was against A and M as opposed to. Like, against the number four seeded Oklahoma. So no, it was, uh, it was incredible. Uh, it just, uh, you know, it takes me back and again, the, the, the competition is different, but it takes me back to, uh, to the, to the Texas bowl back in 2015, huh. uh, when LSU just kind of like ripped right through Texas tech. But again, that's, this is a Texas that's a Texas tech team that was probably nowhere near Oklahoma. Um, but I'm just trying to think of big explosive games that LSU's played, uh, you know, before this season. That it kind of takes me back to that one. But it was just shocking what they did. You know, all week um, I had been in Atlanta around the team hotel talking to the staff, and I had never seen a staff so confident. Mm -hmm. uh, LSU no coaches doubt. were just they, they knew. Inc yeah, incredibly confident and. Uh, in fact, one, one of the told staff me. members told me, I thought it was a great quote. I asked him how he felt Saturday morning and he was walking through and he said, uncomfortably confident. <laughs> like, <laughs> I feel like yeah. they're about to, like, yeah. uh, he was like, I feel like we're about to beat this team by a hundred. 
Yeah, yeah. I, it felt like they could have too. You know, I, I, one of the coaches, I think I tweeted this out during the game, is is thought that uh, Oklahoma, you know, watching film and stuff all week last week, had thought that Oklahoma was the, the fifth best team that they had played, uh, that they would have played, you know, uh, this season behind Alabama, Georgia, uh, Auburn, and Florida. And uh, and I think you might, <laughs> after the game, you might lump in Texas A&M too. Uh, <laughs> well, right. Maybe wait. Texas. I mean, it, it was uh, it was shocking, you know. And, and I know Oklahoma's playing without the leading pass rusher and their safety, but – Man, no. I just yeah. I don't know if they're I mean, gonna really make much of a difference in a, a forty point game. Yeah, it's it's wild. And the thing what's crazy, Ross, is saying they're the fifth best team in the schedule isn't actually that much of a slight to Oklahoma. I mean, look at the names that you yeah. just reeled off. When it's all said and done, Ross, after this national championship, LSU will have played seven top ten matchups in fifteen games. I, I yeah, mean, where where, where yeah. does this team rank? Like all time yeah. potentially. Well, I mean, look at look at the offense. I think I saw some of the stuff from Todd Polite, uh, LSU stat kind of guru, uh, last night. I need to go through his timeline, and I would advise everybody to do the same. He he was tweeting out. Um, yeah, he was on fire the, Saturday. Yeah, offensive marks on Saturday and yesterday. It, it it was incredible. I mean, LSU heading. I mean, they're 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 potentially going to be the the highest. I believe the high, the basically the best offense in college football history as far as some of their numbers. Their yards per game, especially it, it's uh, or at least passing. I mean, it, it's uh, it's incredible. Um, and and I think they've, I, you know, there was an argument I saw kind of on LSU Twitter yesterday about uh, who's the best team. O three eleven in in this year. Gosh, you know, I know 11, 11 played an incredible schedule. You know, O three had a loss on their schedule. Um, I, I just I can't imagine it's not it's this, this year. team. It's yeah. this year. Yeah, I mean it's it's. It, it, it's, it's number nine, man. Incredible. It's and number it's not, nine. Well, and here's here's yep. where I want to go next, Ross. It's not just, but it, but it is number nine. But it's also not just the offense. You got to remember, this is a defense that while they maybe struggled at times, they got three first rounders in that secondary. Like and 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 then Kerry Vincent, the guy who is in the first rounder, second in the SEC in picks now. And what a highlight with four. And what yeah, a pick, That pick was great. So that that's where I wanted to go, Ross. The current state of this LSU defense. And how do you think that LSU defense early on here matches up with Clemson? Yeah, uh, it, it, that was a, a heck. In fact, the last three games that Dave Rainer's unit has played have been really, really impressive. Yeah, um, I think they've allowed like forty something, maybe forty points or something in their last three after giving up, you know, three or four times, giving up thirty plus points this season. So clearly, they've come a long way. We talked to Dave about that. Uh, over in Atlanta, just just how far that they've come as a as a pro as a as a unit uh, that defense and clearly you know that they, they've 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 come a long way and they're they're playing uh, they're playing really well you know as, as far as Clemson um, you know they'll they'll have the work cut out for them right I mean they they've got uh, Clemson's got you know a trio of receivers you know and a quarterback that you know is is gonna I think this year probably uh, rival in the in the same group at least with the LSU and the Alabama. You know, LSU, Alabama, and Clemson kind of had that group of quarterback and trio of receivers uh, that were had a head and shoulders above above anybody else. So they're they're going to get uh, certainly a uh, a test. But um, you know, there's a reason LSU came out favored. I think it's in the, you know four or five points favored. Um, you know, I do think LSU's the the better team, and they're going to be playing in front of a uh, basically a probably a home crowd. I'd imagine it'll be a seventy thirty or so split. Uh, even though those Clemson fans they travel pretty good, and they're right there, you know, near Atlanta. But uh, it, it 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 should be a fun one, and um, it, you know, LSU plays its best; it'll it'll win. Delhi, happy New Year! Great work over the weekend. Thank you for. Um... Thank you for everything on Saturday, man. I, I don't, I don't want to, uh, our listeners. You were, you were fantastic on that article. Meant uh, a lot to me, man. Yeah, but more than that, man. Personally, on, um, I, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but um, Ross actually called me, and right after Verge had told me that the plane had gone down and thought that they had somebody on there like with 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 ties to LSU, Ross gave me a call and personally gave me the information. So wow. um, that was, uh, I appreciate that, and I know that was a tough spot for you. So um, thank you, man. No problem, buddy. See you on Atlanta. See you. There he is, Ross Dellinger. We'll close it out next.